Thank you very much, Dara. Goedemiddag, allemaal. Um, my name is Seth. I work at the SETI Institute. That is almost my name. Search for extraterrestrial intelligence. How many of you think the aliens are out there? How many of you, okay, well, how many of you think they're not out there? See, in the U.S., that would be zero. Okay. Uh, I, I'm just going to give five minutes worth of uh, introductory palaver just to provoke you mostly. That's what my remarks here today are designed to do, provoke you and try and give you a few ideas to think about. To begin with, we're living in a very special time. Now, I think at the beginning of any century, people would say this is going to be a special century. Right, the beginning of the 16th century, they would say it's going to be special. A thousand years ago, they would have said it's going to be special. After all, we have jousting, we have the Black Death coming along. I mean, it's special. Well, this century is going to be special for four reasons, I think. The first off is that we're going to finally understand biology. You've heard a lot of that at this conference, actually. And that has all sorts of consequences that I won't go into. I'm not a biologist. But among these are, and this is being discussed these days in the media, designer babies. And you may say, oh, no, I don't want any designer babies. But suppose you're pregnant and your doctor says, hey, look, for 50 euros more, your kid could have the musical talent of Mozart or Elton John, if you prefer that. Would you say, no, I don't think so? Or would you say, well, 50 euros, I'll do it? Okay, so we're going to understand biology. That's going to be the big science of this century. I think that's probably true. The second thing that's going to happen in the 21st century is we will get off the planet. Of course, we have gotten off the planet, but I mean in a serious way. When I was an undergraduate, uh, that was just before the Crimea War began, I remember my freshman advisor was predicting that by 1990, 10 million people were going to be living off the planet in rotating aluminum cans orbiting the Earth or the Earth-Moon system. Now, it hasn't happened, and the reason it hasn't happened is not because we couldn't build those rotating aluminum cans, but because it's still cheaper to build housing in Arizona or in Mons or whatever. Okay, but that is going to happen, and that's a good thing because, to begin with, we have limited resources here. The asteroids would give us enough resources to sustain humanity forever, forever. Okay, so that's one good thing. The other thing is, if we're dispersed, it will be hard to get rid of everyone, like ants. I can get rid of the ants in my kitchen, but I can't get rid of all the ants because they're dispersed. So dispersing our species during this century will happen. The third thing, and probably the most important thing, will be inventing our successors. I was up at Stanford not too long ago, and I was, well, it doesn't matter what I was doing there, but there was the... Uh, the guy who heads up the Stanford Artificial Intelligence Department, and I asked him point blank, by 2050, will we invent a machine that can teach high school chemistry or write the great American novel or whatever? And he looked up at me and he said, yes. That was the end of his answer. Okay. That may be the most important thing that we do in this century. Finally, I think we're going to find life in space, and I will elaborate on that for two minutes and no more. Finding life in space is something that hasn't been terribly popular in Europe. I'll get back to that in a moment, but there's kind of a three-way horse race to find life in space, and I think one of these horses will cross the finish line in the next two dozen years. First, we might find it nearby, and there the Europeans are involved, NASA as well. We might find it on Mars or one of the moons of Jupiter or Saturn. There are at least six or seven other worlds in our own solar system which might have biology. You'll probably need a microscope to see it. It won't be little green guys trying to abduct you for salacious experiments, but it may indeed, uh, that may happen in the next two dozen years. It's mostly a question of money. All of this is a question of money. The second horse in this race is to build big telescopes that could find evidence for biogenic gases in the atmospheres of planets around other stars. I think Susanna will talk about that, right? If you look at the light from some planet around a distant star and you say, you know, there's oxygen in that atmosphere, in high concentration. You say, I don't know what it is, Bob, but it looks like there's photosynthesis there. There may be cabbage or grass or something like that. That's horse number two. Horse number three is what I work on, SETI, where we do what Jodie Foster tried to do in the movie Contact. We use big antennas and try and eavesdrop on any messages that the aliens may be sending our way. Again, if you look at the numbers, I think that has a good chance, I'll bet everybody a cup of Starbucks, that will find ET in the next two dozen years. So the deal for you is not too bad. Either you open up your newspaper, you won't do that. You open up your browser and it says, scientists find signal coming from space in the next two dozen years or you get a cup of coffee. 
What are the consequences for any of this? To begin with, just finding some microbe somewhere that isn't an earthly microbe will tell us a lot about biology. Secondly, if we were to pick up a signal coming from some star system 300 light years away, that society is going to be way beyond our own. It would be like giving Neanderthals English lessons and opening them, uh, giving them a key to the Library of Congress. That could change everything. I don't think that's going to happen, but it could, could happen. Second, the spin-off. It's been reckoned in the United States that for every dollar taxpayers spend on NASA, they get $10 back in the economy. They ought to give the entire federal budget to NASA. They don't do that. Third, philosophical, and that's perhaps the most important thing. What happened when Copernicus said, you know, the sun doesn't go around the earth, it's the other way around. That didn't change your job. You didn't say, that's it, Marge. Our cosmology is upset, I'm not going to go to work today. You went to work, but it changes everything. And finally, let me just say something uh, to provoke you about culture, because that came up in this morning's sessions. The difference in culture between Europe and the US. I lived in, in the Netherlands, actually, for 13 years. And I gave a talk there at the University in Groningen about life in space and looking for life in space. And the first question I asked them was the question I asked you. How many of you think that intelligent life is out there? And all the hands went up. And then I said, how many of you are willing to spend one guilder, half a euro, one guilder a year, not a day, a year, to look for it? And all the hands went down. And, and I, I went up to one of the professors afterward and I said, why was that? And he said, yeah, now dar sein wir zu nuchter vor. Which is to say, we're too sober for that. It's true. This is an experiment that only the Americans do. And I think that that's not because you don't have the expertise, not because you don't have the equipment, and not because you don't have the money. There's something different in the culture in Europe that personally, I think you ought to fix. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Seth Shostak there, uh, not just for, set, well, for setting up the whole thing and for giving us an entire agenda. I love that, Mr. Speaker. Uh, there are four major points already that we have to discuss, and also for the sudden uh, arrival of the Dutch language, which sounded surprisingly suitable in a conversation about alien languages at exactly that moment. Uh, so. <laughs> The, uh, it just has a lovely time, isn't it? Very uh, uh, Now, the, uh, our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, yes, one of the topics we'll be touching will be exoplanets. I know this is one of the fields that uh, this lady has been uh, researching in. From the University of Oxford, please welcome Dr. Suzanne Agrain. <laughs>